So there's this guy, claims he's invented a time machine. And he's absolutely sure he's got it all figured out, both in his head and on paper. He goes around to all of his family, all of his friends. He's absolutely sure that he has invented a way to travel through time. There's just one problem though. That whole taking a quick trip and coming back with tomorrow's lottery numbers, something he's not quite done yet. He's not been able to answer that one question that every inventor has to be able to answer. Can you show me how it works? This didn't really happen, by the way. Unless you're talking about Ronald Mallet, University of Connecticut physics professor. Smart guy. I read about him a few years ago, or did I meet him a few years from now? I say he's a smart guy not because he is a university physics professor, but because unlike this first guy, he's going about this whole inventing process the right way. Professor Mallet explains it like this. He says, think of a cup of coffee. Just like the spoon stirs the coffee and swirls this bean, he believes that lasers can spin space and time through a process he calls frame dragging. Professor Mallet's not just talking about this with coffee cups and spoons, no, no, no. He's actually working on building his own prototype using spinning lasers inside of a glass tube. As an inventor, he's doing it the right way. He's working on actual physical prototypes, not claiming he's done it until he actually has proof. You see, if you're going to invent time travel or anything else for that matter, you've got to not only work it out in your head and write it down on paper, but you have to ultimately build something that will prove that it works. You have to build a prototype. What I'm talking about here is called reducing your invention to practice. Google it. Now let's get one thing clear. Your prototype, especially your first prototype, does not and should not cost you a fortune. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. And you can go through several prototypes before you can even get it to work right, and that's okay. Thomas Edison said, I have not failed. I have discovered 10,000 ways it will not work. Then he went on to invent the light bulb and change the world. You can even build your own prototype out of spare parts from a makerspace, like the one here at Louisville's Level 1. Your first prototype should be more of what I call a Franken-type. You've gone out to the graveyard of broken products, spare parts. You've used glue sticks and duct tape. The result is a prototype that only an inventor could love. But you've taken that first important step of prototyping in the right way. You've built it, proved that it works, and you haven't spent a lot of money. So it doesn't matter if you're in going to invent time travel or the next internet connected toaster. Just, if you're going to do that, keep one thing in mind. Just make sure you're actually able to prove it. This isn't Nulu. I thought this was supposed to be the 70s.